Hello, boys and girls. We are back here uh, with our uh, smelting array and most of what's in this cave. So uh, the uh, bamboo farm behind me, as uh, well as the uh, sugarcane farm, the cactus farm, the zero teak bamboo farm over there. Everything will break with uh, Minecraft 1.16. So I have to get ready for that. So sugarcane should be pretty easy. Instead of uh, one sugarcane plant, we will have just uh, many and uh, we will do that. For the moment, I still have a bit of uh, sugarcane backlog, so uh, that's not that important. Then this contraption here is basically our uh, XP machine. And I guess we will need that no more uh, because uh, with the Guardian farm that should be a pretty good uh, XP grinder. And of course uh, once we reach uh, 1.16 I finally want to do the gold farm which would be uh, even better. So that leaves basically uh, the uh, smelter array here. Uh, that we have uh, down there um, and this is powered by bamboo and the bamboo is grown by zero ticking which is or which will be a thing of the past in 1.16 so I have to come up with a solution for that and I will build a new furnace array, a bit smaller than the one down there, um, mainly because uh, uh, I need to uh, be able to uh, fuel it uh, constantly. And one thing that I want to uh, do with that is uh, uh, I want to have it in a way that it does not break down uh, when the, the chunks are unloaded. So basically this is a problem with uh, these machines. Uh, they are running constantly and if the chunk is unloaded in an inconvenient uh, uh, time in their uh, cycle, they break. Uh, I think it's not that big an issue with uh, the cactus and uh, the sugarcane one, but basically this breaks every time. So I want to have something that's uh, sustainable in that way. So enough talk, let's get over there. We're here in one corner of our ravine and to start this off let's do some math that for once I have prepared. So one smelting process in a furnace takes 10 seconds and it needs 4 bamboo. So basically that means uh, we need 1 bamboo every 2.5 seconds per furnace and a bamboo grows one in height uh, every 204.8 seconds so that boils down to that we need uh, 82 bamboo to fully power one furnace all the time and as I want to have 10 furnaces I need 820 bamboo, so you can imagine it takes up quite a bit of space. So I prepared something down here. Uh, this goes in that direction all the way to the uh, slime farm, that's the wall there, and then this is basically an area of 100 by uh, 100 blocks and I just dug out the top 
three layers and uh, now I want to uh, use a bit of TNT to uh, get down there. Um, if we have a look down there it goes quite a bit down so it's maybe 20 to 25 uh, blocks in uh, height so we should be able to uh, get quite a bit of uh, stuff in here but uh, of course first I have to get rid of a lot of stone now it's all down dug out all the way and as you can see there is a quite a bit of space so the, while in the process I also opt my game with uh, two more uh, beacons also digging it got a lot easier with those and uh, I will collect now all the diamond blocks so we can see uh, how many uh, we gained and uh, in the meantime I have some uh, material prepared for you that I recorded during the dig I'm not quite sure why I always do this to myself. Pick out projects that are way bigger. An area of 100 times 100 has 10,000 blocks per layer. At a height of 25, that is one quarter of a million blocks. To get there, I tried different methods. Pushing TNT in a hole works well, but requires a lot of TNT and thereby lots of gunpowder and sand. TNT duping flying machines need a certain height or they will commit suicide. The next best thing to place all of them manually is a dropper line. That however needs a drop chute and a hole at the bottom. With sufficient height, flying machines become possible, but those can easily make a mess as they leave large unlit strips for massive mob spawning. Or you're just too clumsy and get blown up by your own TNT. In the end, I decided to gather some more riddle skeleton skulls and got quite lucky with two drops on four kills. The wither fight did not end quite so well for me. While I had night vision and swiftness and strength and a strong bow, I was a bit overconfident with uh, the last two wither fights that I did. So, uh, I just thought I could uh, tackle it uh, quite easily, but as we will see, yeah, that's quite the case. In the end, I was just a bit too slow on the draw of my uh, engine tower shit. See? With two additional beacons at the bottom, almost the whole area was covered in haste too. And I just dug out the rest without too much more dying. I'm sure you tried to guess how many diamond ore blocks uh, there were and my guess was about two stacks but effectively it's almost two and a half and that should give us uh, quite a bit of uh, diamonds uh, but let's not do this down here and let's not do this uh, with a silk touch pick because that will yield us no diamonds so let me grab my 
my fortune pick and uh, head on up. So I forget to hit the record button while mining all the diamonds, but I get uh, uh, five and a half stacks out of that, uh, which is which is quite good actually. Um, and I'm sorry we did not come around to actually build the furnace array in this episode, but uh, that's something for the next one. And even then I will not be able to uh, finish it as uh, it's quite huge and I'm still lacking some of the resources I need for it. But uh, we should get a head start. So. This is it for now, I hope you enjoyed this episode, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!